All right. Hey, Aaron, I'm going to do a quick intro and then we can get started. Okay. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. This evening, we have Dr. Aaron Hudson um, here as special speaker, and she's going to talk to us about tiny homes, container homes, affordable housing, uh, how to get your kids involved in investing, all the good stuff. Um, Aaron is the manage, one of the managing partners at Quadro Capital, and her company currently has over $200 million asset under management. Um, she has worked with over 700 investors and helped over 10,000 women to get started in real estate investing, um, and um, working, and uh, she's passionate about financial literacy and creating legacy for the family and children. Um, she's a mother, and you do not look like a grandmother, Erin. Stop it. I don't look <laughs> like what? You do not look like a grandmother. Stop. I know, crazy, right? It's true. It's real. Um, beautiful grandmother and marathon runner. And um, she's also into palestra philanthropy um and has helped um charities in belize and haiti so welcome erin we cannot wait to hear your about your container home communities awesome well listen first and foremost i'm 12 minutes late to the party we're gonna make up speed thank you so much matthew noel natasha michael shanti mikhail all of you guys for the grace um I'm going to spare the whole where I've been all day and for what, but it doesn't matter. I'm here with you guys and I hope to still continue to bring the fire and I hope you guys are pumped up. Listen, I just have one really big ask and I don't know if it's going to be too big of an ask for y'all, but I get pumped up when I get to hear your reaction, see your smiley faces. And I don't know about you, but I only see three other people, four other people on this call. Y'all are hiding behind your cameras. Come on. Can't you give me your grill today? That's what I want to see. Thank you. I see you, Noel. It's good to see you. Anyone else brave enough? If not, whatever. Fine. I'll fire away. It's just hard to deliver and give 120 if I don't have it back. There we go. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Mikhail. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's do it. Let's get started here. We're gonna talk about how to own a luxury container home in 30 days or less. I do not want you guys to see this as a pitch. I want you to see this as getting informed, educated. Thank you, Shanti. I appreciate you more than you know. Um, this is either going to educate you or it's going to fuel your fire on a couple different fronts. It's either going to make you want to have your kids start getting in the game and investing because the stories that I'm about to share with you that have unfolded in our family, starting at the kids being 14, 15, and 16 years old, becoming real estate investors. It's going to spur you on to say, holy heck, there's a child. I'll keep it clean. Um, that you need to get in the game with helping solve the affordable housing issue, shortage that we have around the world. You may start thinking, oh my gosh, I want to help veterans and find a home for them. I want to help bring um, housing to the homeless. You may say, to heck with all that, I want to do Airbnb. So this is for anybody and everybody that's thinking all things small and is looking for the lowest barrier of entry. And as I go through this, I'm going to share with you exactly what I did, how I got started, and how it can become a possibility for you. So I'm going to, we're going to have a conversation here, and I'm going to share stories. I love stories because I feel like there's so much to learn from them. I'm going to share with you how I got, how, how the shift happened and my door opened, especially when people were pissing in my Cheerios and told me I would never be able to get a loan for a shipping container retreat and how all of that unfolded. And what I'm going to share with you is applicable to anything in life. Don't just think this is about shipping containers. I want you to hear my stories and I want you to figure out how you can apply that in your life with whatever phase you are in, in the real estate space or having grit and pushing through. There's a lot of all of it intertwined from mindset to getting strategic. And one thing I will tell you is I am one resourceful son of a gun. All right, so let's go. Um, let me get, and I'm so bummed because I got you all my um, in my face. So you guys are over here and my presentation's here and I feel a little bit of a disconnect. So thank you for turning on your camera. So every once in a while I can take a sneak peek. Okay. I am um, from San Antonio. I'm a real estate investor. I don't want to get caught up too much on me as Lupe already shared. 
Um, came from being a doctor living in Southern California, owned a couple wellness centers, had 30 employees, um, got a taste of what it was like to be an entrepreneur and be the last one to get paid out of those 30 people. And guess what? First of all, everybody raise your hand if you're real estate investors. Like, who are we talking to? I just want to make sure we're all in the same somewhat. Um, Shanti, what you got going on, girl? Can you like take your microphone off? Tell me just a wee bit so I can level set there. Everyone else? Melinda, did you say yes, you're a real estate investor? Okay, cool. I just wanna know who my audience is. What you got, Shanti? So I'm new to the party. I'm I'm, I'm just trying to, to learn about this real estate investment opportunity, get oh. some information. Oh. And um, I haven't done anything in the real estate industry as of, as of yet. Awesome. So. so here's what I will tell you. Number one, try is a lie. Number two, as you said, I haven't done it yet. Welcome to the party. We're about to get you engrossed, whether it's with this or something else. Girl, you got to get on the train. This is where <laughs> financial freedom comes into play. And I'm also going to share with you guys about other people's money. And so anytime I hear people say, well, I don't have the money to get involved. How bad do you want it is my question. Because if you really, really want it, you're going to find a mother um, freaking way. Okay. All right, cool. So here we are. Um, at the end, if you guys end up grabbing and snapping that QR code, I will make sure we get you the 15 creative ways to use a shipping container home. All right. We're going to talk about learning what a shipping container is and how in the world do we convert those and turn them into tiny homes. We're going to share with you how, or I am going to share with you how do you prepare for a tiny home and what it looks like to purchase. Everybody wants to know what the numbers, how much is it going to cost and what is the earning potential in these? Okay. And if any of you don't like a fast talker and someone that speaks with a whole lot of freaking passion, you might want to jump off the call now because I can't help myself, especially when it comes to helping other people win at the game of life. So we're going to talk about, and you're going to learn about the construction, the setup, the pricing, the profit, and the delivery. This here is one of our shipping container tiny homes that we actually have. Um, it's a little bit not clear on purpose, but you can see that nice, good feel and that vibe that you get. Super small micro space that's really cute and creative. Um, this here is Casey. Casey actually is was working on her book and she actually purchased one of the our shipping container homes and she uh, rents it out once a week when she's not there and gets some extra income. And then you have Mark. He's bought a couple 40 footers from us and he's been able to pay off those 40 footers within 18 months using his rental income that he has received. And next we're gonna talk about the shipping containers. So some people are like shipping containers. Yes, you are right. They are the shipping containers that come across the barges. And believe it or not, um, it is very common that these little shipping containers actually fall off the barge and into the water and they use a little tool that comes and picks them up. And I love that Matthew is shaking his head saying yes. So he's in the know about that. It gets picked up, it put, gets put back on there. Why do I share that? Because it just means that these are waterproof, that they can sustain a whole lot of anything, meaning that they are hurricane proof, waterproof, tight sealed, and so on and so forth. And so yes, it is those shipping containers that you see across the water. This here is the Taylor model. And this is my daughter's. Of course, we named it after her. She, her name's Taylor. And this is one of our first shipping containers that we had in 2019. This is um, in Kerrville, Texas, just outside of San Antonio, in the middle of nowhere. We'll talk numbers and I'll show you how in the middle of nowhere, it's still doing fantastic. Take note that you see the ship lap. Our whole goal is to chip in Joanne one of these shipping containers. Everybody around us in Texas has these shipping containers, not everybody, a lot of people, majority of people use these as deer cabins for like the ranches. And they're usually like a boy. They're gross. They're not cute. And so I actually talked to my builder quite some time back and I said, can we make this really cute? Can we Chip and Joanne it? If any of you raise your hand, if you've seen Chip and Joanne, the show where they transform the houses and make them all far farmhouse and cute. Okay, cool. Well, so check this. I wanted, I went to the builder and I said, listen, I said, I want you to build me something. And he goes, what do you want? I said, I want you to turn this like into a she shed. I want shiplap. I want faux beams. I want farm doors. I want a gooseneck sink. I want the recess lighting. And he looks at me and goes, you are freaking crazy. And I said, I'll pay for it. I want you to build me one. And so long story short, I wasn't that demanding, but he kind of liked that I like gave him a little challenge. 
So I'm going to tell you more about that story in just a moment and what unfolded from that. But is that not super cute? This is our open living, the Taylor model. This is another Taylor model, except for this is my son Tyler's shipping container. These happen to be right next to each other. And I'll show you shortly as well. And um, same thing, ship lap, faux beams. It's open living of 160 square feet. <laughs> not a lot. And then this here's a little kitchenette with the retro micro, the retro fridge, the gooseneck sink. So you can see it's super cute and really quaint. This here is the model two, the Hudson. Yes, my last name's Hudson. I thought, why not? And um, notice on the model two, it's got a pony wall. And that pony wall is the divider between the bed. It doubles as the headboard for the bed. And then over on the other side is the kitchenette. So it cr creates a little split. I don't want to say two different spaces because you're talking about 160 square feet being shared, but you get the gist, right? And then this here is again, two examples of the Hudson model. And this is the one on the bottom right-hand corner is lakefront at our retreat at Canyon Lake, just outside of San Antonio. And this one here is over at the container retreat in high, which is um, situated on 15 acres in between the wineries over there. This here is the bathroom, super nice, small, clean. And then you have your electronic door locks, which are fantastic for Airbnbs. Oh my gosh, that was the thunder. I don't, did you guys all hear that? I thought it was a gunshot. Sorry. Um, wow. Thunder and lightning. Okay. So inside this top one is our 40 foot um, shipping container. You notice if you follow my little arrow here, this takes you into a bedroom. So it's a one bedroom where you can have a um, futon. For us, we have a Murphy bed. And so that folds out so that you can sleep two more people and little kitchenette area. This here is another one of our 40 footers. The layout's a little bit different. It's got the kitchen, whoops. It's got the kitchen sink along the side there. And of course, back in there is that one bedroom. In the one bedroom is a closet, some closet space here. Okay, just trying to orient you guys. Here's the outside. Some crazy wild colors. Why? Because I'm wild. I like vibrant. I like to stand out. Not everybody's cup of tea, but that's okay. You get to pick your own color when you go with our um, deluxe model. This here shows the shipping container eight feet wide by eight feet tall. And if you go with the 20 foot container or you have an option to go with a 40 foot container. So that 40 foot long container, again, that's 320 square feet. And the 20 foot long container is 160 square feet. Am I going at an okay speed for y'all? Give me a thumbs up, please, if we're good. Yep, okay. Melinda, we good, sister? Okay, I saw your head nod. All right, fantastic. So this here again, this is over at the lake. And notice how we've got our retractable table that goes up and down. It doubles as a workstation or you can eat um, from there. And then we also like to bring the outside in and vice versa. Notice how we have a little bit, um, we actually did a concrete pad here. And so they have a nice good patio set. And there's the water down over here. We're in a little cove at the lake, which is awesome. We've got 27 shipping container tiny homes at this retreat. Let's go to the next. So here we are with materials and construction. And you can kind of see that taking place. So the containers are rated cargo worthy. People ask that. Yes, there's. we don't have any leaks, holes. They're functional. They have solid seams and welded con construction and they're known as cargo worthy. And then here you can see the most important part. With a shipping container, they get very cold or they get very hot. So what's the important thing to do? Make sure they're properly insulated. You can see that perfectly over here on the um, right-hand side picture. You can see us in the middle welding the window um, and do, doing a cutout and doing some welding there. And then to the left, you see our two by fours, just like if you were to build a house, you still have two by fours there and a couple cutouts for the windows. Yes, they are AC 462 certified. Um, you'll see we've got the ICC, the IBC and the IRC. They're super strict guidelines. That doesn't mean, okay, great, we're good to go anywhere. No, you're gonna have to check with your municipalities depending on where you are. I love Texas, your girl's from Texas. And I know that if I buy um, land outside city limits on unrestricted land, then I'm gonna have a pretty good chance of being able to make some magic happen. Um, 
we, yes, we have a 12 month builder's warranty on our materials and construction. And then of course we've got smoke detectors in place. So people want to know how in the world do we prepare for something like such coming in? So we actually, as a reminder, in case you were not sure, we build these, we sell these, and we deliver these. That's called a one-stop shop. When I first started, I had a manufacturer that I was working with and everything was at their time, their disposal, et cetera, et cetera. And what we found out because we were selling to other people in 2019 is to hell with that. We want to have control. We want to control the uncontrollables, right? So we have control. We took everything in house and we didn't have to worry about the manufacturer shortages and timings and delays. And so we literally deliver these shipping containers to your home. Now, check this out. Here's the best part about this. All you got to have is a flat surface. You clearly do not want to put these just laying on the ground. Why? Because water tends to settle and you've got metal and water. And what does that make? Come on, Matthew, help me. Makes rust, right? Okay. Good job. I saw your mouth move and I saw rust. Um, and so we want to make sure that we either put them on little granite chips so the water can go away from the container or we'll put them on a cement um, pad, okay? That's literally 20 feet by eight feet wide. Or we'll put them on little, how many of you have seen those four inch by four inch little cinder blocks that you can buy at Home Depot for call it three or four bucks. You put them on every corner, all four corners. And then in the middle on the right and the left, you put them there for the middle support. Super simple, super cheap. It just depends on what your preference is, okay? The bottom line is keep them off the ground unless you've got the granite, crushed granite where the water can get away. Everyone good? Thumbs up. Are you finding this a little bit inform informative? Kind of different, isn't it? I already said it and you're gonna hear me say it probably two more times. What do you need and what is most ideal? Unrestricted land outside city limits. And if you're contemplating, you're like, oh my gosh, this might be something I wanna do. Go to the city, ask your local zoning board. And if you're um, wanting to help solve the affordable housing issue, are any of you like, yes, I wanna help solve the affordable housing issue? Just curious. And if you're not, it's okay. But raise your hand if you are. There's a lot of money to be made and a lot of goodness to sow into our world in the most beautiful way, which is the lowest hanging fruit to be able to make some incredible money. Here's what I will tell you. I'm gonna give you the script right now. You go to the local zoning board. How many of you heard of land being given away if you'll develop it and help solve the affordable housing? Raise your hand if you have heard of that. Okay, well, y'all should be raising your hand. And if you're not, you need you guys need to figure out more info on this because it's powerful. So imagine if you went to the local zoning board and I'm just gonna do a little role play really quick here and give you somewhat the script. You walk into the office and you say, who is it that I need to talk to that is the head of your local zoning board for housing? And then they're like, oh, I don't know, man, can you help me out? I could really use your hand because we're going to do some big things in this community to make it even better than it is. And you shut up and you listen and you stand there and you smile until they give you an answer. They've got to point you to someone, guys. And all you got to do is find out who is that who that knows how that allows us to walk it out. Because every municipality has got something for affordable housing. So if they tell you no, that's the wrong person. Don't give up till you find the right person. So then check this out. Um, once you find that right person, then you're, you're talking to them and you say, hey, my name is Melinda. And I've heard that you are the man or you are the woman, exact woman or man that I need to talk to. And you're the one that's gonna help solve a big, big problem with me. And they're gonna be like, what are you talking about? Listen, you, I'm sure you're well aware. We've got a massive shortage in housing. Do we not? Yes, we do. Listen, I want nothing more than to pour back into my community. And I know you're the head of this community for local zoning board. And I'm just wondering, might you want to be able to find a way to find some housing for our community members? You just have to ask the right questions, right? So you're asking the right questions. Perhaps you're not the right person, but do you know who I might be able to talk to so that I can help, we can band together with our community and go solve some problems and, and get some housing to our people, to our vets. What, who do you think, ask questions, guys. He who asks the most questions are the winners. So with our, you can ask him this. You can say, hey, you know, you being a part of this zoning board in our community, where do you feel like we have a shortage in housing? Oh, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what you're getting at. 
well, do you think it's like the home? Do you think like we need to solve the homelessness issue? Do you think it's our vets that don't have housing? Do you think it's the single moms? Like, what do you feel like is our biggest need in this community? I need to be able to understand because I really want to help. Guys, they're going to say something. You're not asking them for anything. You're asking them for who needs the most help, right? Everybody wants to be heard. They're probably going to give you some answer. Are you guys catching what I'm throwing down? I'm telling you, you guys want some free land? I just gave you a little bit of a script that's works. So who knows? Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate the clap. And by the way, this is the Zoom clap. If you're excited and you hear something that's really, really good, you can do this. You don't need to turn on your microphone or you can get your hand out and start doing this or money, money, money or something. Can you just, or smile at me? I don't know. Okay, so then we have, um, we're talking about how many in your party. So in a 40 foot shipping container, easy two people can fit either long-term or short-term. And if it's for an Airbnb, you can do four people. If it's a 20 foot container to live in it long-term, one person don't really recommend to, but for sure for Airbnb, two people is great. Now to purchase, check it out. Most important part where you're like, okay, well, how much are these puppies? So a 20 foot shipping container is $35,000 for a standard one. We will go over what that is included, what that includes for a standard. And a 20 foot container that's completely dialed out like the ones that I showed you, those are considered deluxes and those are $40,000. Then we pop over to the 40 foot container and the standard is 57,000 and the deluxe is 65. What is the standard model include? So standard model, of course, with this 20 foot shipping container, got the vinyl sliding doors, framed bedroom window, fully insulated with electrical plumbing, drywall, mini split AC system, wood flooring, a kitchenette with countertops, with cabinets, the kitchen sink, um, the pocket door for the bathroom, the shower, the toilet, the vanity, the vessel, the countertops. And guess what? It comes with an eight gallon tankless water heater. It also comes with an AC mini split, which is for hot or cold. On the back of it, it has a six panel breaker box with 125 amp. And we also equip it with a 50 amp 220 um, generator, like the RV connection. Why? Because I want you to think of this shipping container. You can keep it on a trailer. There's also places that are like, uh, no, you can't put that down. But what if you kept it on a trailer? It's just like a little... RV, right? So when you go to the RV, you take your, your little RV and what do you do, right? When you pull in, you hook it straight up to the electricity and you hook it straight up to you being able to use the toilet, right? So this is the same concept. It has all of the same things just an RV does. Same thing with that tankless hot water heater. It's small, but here's the cool part is that when you are dealing with a shipping container tiny on the most expensive thing, if you had to replace it, would be the mini split for like 650 bucks. The hot water heater, no more than 400 bucks. So it's not, it's very, if something goes wrong, you're much more safe. How do I know that? Well, because I owned 26 single family rental properties um, back in 2015 is when I bought them. And what would happen every time a tenant moved out, I had to go back in, I had to paint the house, I had to replace the flooring. This is low maintenance, if that's what you're looking for. We didn't go over this, but you saw my 20 and 40 foot shipping containers that were the deluxe ones. And I went through some of those items with the um, ship lap and et cetera. And then in the 40 foot containers, they have little single burner um, cooktop and the deluxe model. I see deluxe is spelled wrong. Um, double burner cooktop. Okay. Let's go over profits. So clearly before we hit profits, you really can take these puppies anywhere. You can put them in the desert. You can put them at the beach. You can put them in the mountains. You can put them wherever you want as long as you get approved and do not do it without checking with your municipality, okay? Don't ever come back to me and tell me there's an issue because we don't do with any of that of dealing with cities because they're all different. Requirements are all different. So here we have it. Let's go for story time. These are the two shipping containers that I was talking about that are my kids. My daughter's got this one here. My son has got the red one. And look in the far back. What do you guys see back here? This is a big house back here. You can't see it all. But this is our Airbnb that we bought in 2017, January 2017. When we bought this land, um, I'm always looking for multiple exits. And I want it to be really usable in a few different fashions. So when I first bought it, yes, it had this beautiful Airbnb home. 
with a walk-in pool, the beach walk-in pool, a Palapa Entertainment Center out in the backyard. It was beautiful. Here were the bonuses. It was on five acres, check. It had a pond back there, check. It had a place where I could actually bring tiny homes and put them around the pond, check. So <laughs> it was unrestricted, check. It was outside city limits, check. Are you catching what I'm throwing down? You don't wanna be stuck in a box and not be able to do very many things and have versatility when you buy. Make sense, everybody? Raise your hand. Awesome. So this here is my son's. Um, and you can see when we took a picture of this, this was, I don't know, back in 2019, we were renting it for two for $100 a night. I'm gonna go back to this picture really quick. When I talk about lowest hanging fruit, the reason I love these shipping containers for my kids is because I buy apartment buildings. We bought 30 apartment buildings. Is it easy for um, children to get in the apartment space at such a young age? Age? No, it's not easy. Plus they can't manage them. And you've got to have a great amount of capital to put in to become an LP investor and something like that. With us, it's $100,000. Do we make exceptions at 50,000? Yeah. Do you think my kids had 50,000? No. So mom was the bank for them. Mom paid for this. And the deal was that we were, and I'm telling you this because you got to get your creative juices flowing and going about how can you be resourceful and make deals and whatever that might look like. So they got half the proceeds and I got the other half because I was the bank. Of their half that they got, well, number one, what they had to do is quarterly, they had to bring their spreadsheet to mom. And we had to go over those numbers. And my daughter, who at the time was 14, my son was 15, he said, she said, I don't want to do an Excel spreadsheet. And my sweet boy goes, no problem. I could do it for you, but it's going to cost you 5%. So imagine being at the dinner table and having these competitions of whose Airbnb is doing better, talking about numbers and spreadsheets and talking about growing your empire and wealth and all the things. Those were not terms that were going around my dinner table. I can tell you that. And retirement and building a legacy were not topics of conversation at my dinner table either. So the fact that cash flow and our ROI are at my dinner table with my kids, I feel like I'm a mom that's winning. And I have a lot of flaws and I'm screwing up in a lot of ways. But one thing I will tell you is if you can teach your children not to give them a fish, but teach them how to fish, you can't help for them to have success as they go along the way, right? So now my son has already said, I've got a 50, uh, a 40 foot shipping container, by the way, on this land as well. Guess how much a 40 foot shipping container that's 360 square feet is renting for on a lease that I just signed for 12 months. Somebody put it in the chat. Let me see what we got. Lupe, tell me what um, they're saying these are renting for. I don't see it, so. If you can turn off your microphone, everybody, come on, put in your, let's see who wins. Put in the amount, a 40 foot shipping container. It's only 360 square feet. So far, we just have one, uh, Ash says 1200. Okay, guys, don't be lazy. Interact. Tell me what you think. 500, 600. What, what is your number? 750. Awesome. What do we got? Say it out loud. 750. Okay, great. Well, I'm here. 1,900. Okay, who said $1,000? 1,500. Okay, those are all awesome. We're not in that cool of an area. But whoever said 1,000, you win. We just signed the lease for $1,000 for 360 square feet. People want small. They want easy. They want easy maintenance. And um, I was shocked, but it did happen. And we had $1,000 for the last tenant there. So I'm not shocked, but I'm still shocked that we're able to get that for a tiny shipping container. Okay, so check this out. Here it is on Airbnb. This is the down season. We started this off, like I said, in 2019 of January. We rented it for $99 on off season. And my children were making $1,500 easy a month, meaning they were renting for at least 15 nights a month. Okay. Then we come over here. Feel free to get the QR code. You'll just be able to see more pictures of what's going on if you want it. Um, and then here is my uh, daughter's. Okay. So now let's talk about what's the earning potential. So walk with me for a second. I'm going to show you the numbers for one single container home. And I'm going to show you with it just being rented out as an Airbnb on the weekends, which is eight nights per month. And just so you guys know, whether you use it as a long-term or you use it as an Airbnb, it's I feel pretty confident that those numbers are going to be neck and neck. So let's walk through this together. Example one. 
$800 a month, right? We said eight nights just on the weekends. That's eight nights a month at $100 a month, $100 a night. That's $800 a month times 12 months equals $9,600 minus your $3,600 in expenses. Okay. We've got it right here. 300 bucks a month times 12 months is 3,600 in expenses, leaving you with $6,000. Everybody on the same page so far? I don't want to lose you. Everyone thumbs up if you got the 6,000. You divide that by, we just gave an all-in price of that $40,000 for your shipping container. And that's a 15% return. Example two is these puppies are running for $150 a night, especially on on season. And if you pick the right location, 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 your occupancy rates and your nightly rates are going to be higher. If we do it for a $150 a night, you can see we're getting $1,200 a month times 12 months is $14,400 minus the $3,600 in expenses equals $10,800. We divide that same number by 40 and now we're up to a 27% return. Not too shabby, right? This is where y'all should be going money, 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 right? Somebody. Um, And same thing really if you were to rent it. I mean, do the math. If it rents for 800 bucks a night or even call it um, 600 bucks a night, I'm not a night, I'm sorry, 600 bucks a month. Walk with me and level set for just one second. If it rents for $600 a month and over here I'm telling you $800 a month, but you have $300 in expenses, who's responsible for the expenses if they're a long-term tenant? So is it fair to say if they're paying $600 in rent, you're probably actually even making more than the Airbnb if it's only running for hundred bucks a night? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. So you figure out, are you in an area or do you know an area where Airbnb would be hot? Or do you want to solve the affordable housing issue and not have to worry so much about taking care of your tenants in an Airbnb style? All right. I'm not going to go over this. I'm going to, well, I will. I'll just be short. We have, I've been doing these presentations recently and well, not recently, but more. And what the feedback is, is people don't have the land and they want to know, holy heck, I want to buy one of these shipping containers. Can we put it on your land? And so we've been getting our list and adding people to it that are interested in this. And what it looks like is whatever they pay for the land, they would earn 10% of their purchase price of their container. Let's be simple. If you buy all in for $50,000, you would get 10% a year on that, which is $5,000. Divide that by 12 months or quarterly payments. Everyone catching that? Cool. So, and you would sign, it would be like a lease. It'd be like you're leasing your container to us for two years. And the goal is to empower you so that you get your own land. And after two years, you come and deliver that on your land. But at least it gets you in the game, right? So here we go. Let's talk about the Texas wine country. This is 15 acres. I want you guys to start thinking with different colors out of your crayon box. I bought this 15 acres. It was in the hill country. There's wineries to the tune of 70 of them along a 30 mile stretch where I live in the hill country. I bought 15 acres and we developed it and we made these cute little pods, three different pods with tiny homes that kind of make a semi-circle so you could come with your friends. And everybody laughed at me and they said, Erin, you're crazy. No bank is going to give you a loan to go create a shipping container retreat. Not to mention these things are totally movable. Somebody can come pick it up on a forklift and drive off with your shipping container. It's never going to happen. And I don't know about you, but when someone tells me I can't, it puts more fire under my fanny to figure out a way how, right? And so what I'll tell you is um, I did ask around and I did get no's, but let me tell you something. I may not be the smartest chick, but what I will tell you, I've got grit that is like no other. And so let me tell you what happened. I ended up going to a um, multifamily event there was 250 people in the audience. No, I'm sorry. Even more than that. There's 350 people in the audience. It was a disrupt equity event for multifamily. I was on the panel. There were five women on the panel. Were any of you guys there a couple years ago, two years ago? No. Okay, cool. Well, you'll get to hear it anyways. Um, and there were four women on there, super prim and proper women. And all of the sudden, this MC says, starts asking questions. And I'm at the very last person on the on the row of these women. And so he asked the question, he goes through each of the women, the women give their responses. And I'll be honest, they are very prim and proper women, just very 
quiet and subdued. And if you can't tell already, I'm super passionate about life and I love all things entrepreneurial, love to help people win. And so they asked a question about why are you in this space? And I said, I couldn't help myself. I jumped out of my chair and I said, we are in the greatest space ever. And there is so much opportunity for everybody in this room. Do you understand that I came from being a doctor making seven figures a year, but I saw something that was happening. Reimbursement started to go down, not to mention I had five kids and the likelihood of them becoming doctors was minute, but I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I could go build a mighty empire in the real estate space. And so I knew I had to make the shift and I knew I had to move. That was just question number one. By the time they got to the fifth question, the MC would say, okay, everybody get ready for this answer that Dr. Hudson's gonna give us. And whatever it was, I was super passionate, okay? This went on for an hour. I got done with this. I went to the back of the room. They gave a break and who followed? The MC. He said, Aaron, I need to talk to you. And I said, yeah. I didn't know who he was. I just knew he was the MC. And he said, listen, he goes, I heard you mention something about shipping containers and you're doing a development and you're looking around and you're needing funding for it or something. And I said, yeah. And he goes, listen, he goes, I've been up there for an hour with you. And what I'll tell you is I have learned so much about you. And I said, really? He goes, I can tell that you're a very good human. I can tell that you have a desire to help people win. I can tell that you do great sound business. I can tell that you're really successful. I can tell that people really, really like you. And I said, yeah. He goes, well, let me tell you something. I'm the vice president of Independence Financial Bank, and I would never lend on those shipping containers. And I said, well, why? He goes, first of all, they're brand new. There's not a lot of people doing this. Number two, they're not permanent structures. And uh, it's just way too new. He goes, but I will tell you one thing. After hearing you speak for an hour and learning about the true desires of your heart, I would lend to you all day long just because of the human you are. And I remember feeling like, holy crap, I need to pick my chin up. And I didn't want to act in desperation, but I was really caught off guard, but in the most beautiful of ways, because here's the real truth. If we desire to help people win at the game of life, we're excited and fired up about what we're doing. And you truly want to impact lives in a beautiful way and take others with you with one hand up and one hand down. You can't help but to win and you can't help but for people to feel your inner soul and your frequency and your vibration that comes and gets emitted from you. Would you not agree when you meet somebody that's powerful that you just are vibing with them and they're good energy? Would you not agree that you feel it? Give me a thumbs up. Yeah? Okay, cool. Thank you. So that is how my door opened, guys. That's how I got my big break. And so, um, whoops, this was my second project. And listen, your sister Erin here does not let um, grass grow under her feet. I found this land 30 days after I found the first land that was in the wine country. And I had brought on selected partners. And I'm going to tell you about those in a second too, because I want you guys to start thinking a little bit differently. On this land here, um, I had brought in a partner that was a mutual friend of another, and he was a CPA by trade. He was an attorney and he owned 16, I'm sorry, 16 high-end RV parks and really renowned, fantastic areas with 16,000 members, okay? Do you think that's a giant that I might want to stand on his shoulders because he's already doing big things and connect with the right people that kind of already have a track record and a stack? Yes. So I called him up. I said, you're going to think I'm on drugs. I said, Gerhard, I got to tell you something. I said, I know we just bought that land 30 days ago, but I found land waterfront in an area where I've been looking for over three years for land. There's nothing around the whole entire lake for sale. And this just came up a day ago. I said, it would be an incredible area for our next retreat. I said, you probably think I'm crazy, don't you? And he's like, Aaron, I love your heart and I love your hunger. I'm totally interested. How much is it? I said, a million dollars. And he goes, let's go buy it. So I said, okay. Those are the kind of people you want to work with. 
people where you're vibrating at the same frequency and you want to go on and do great things together. Not somebody that you tell them they're like, oh man, well, I don't have any money. Like I, there's no way we haven't even gotten started with the first one. Do you want people that are going to bring you down or do you want people that are like, let's go, let's go work the problem and find a solution to go find the money to borrow from uncle Sam to get the dog spot. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like go hang out with people that want to do big things because I will tell you when you go from little and you create something like how I created the shit, the first shipping container retreat. Well, let me rewind. When I first got started, I was in private practice and I told you that I acquired 26 rental properties in two years. When I was in practice and all of a sudden I found out about single family um, properties, rental properties, that was like my ceiling. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get there. That's like, that's so far-fetched. Well, then that one property turned into two, into three, into four. And I did uh, the rinse and repeat multiple times. And that then became my floor. So then what became my next move? My next move was buying a $5 million property. I did that and that became my floor. The next one was a $30 million property and that became my floor. Then it was like, freak, why not? Let's go do some shipping container retreats. Like, do you see what I'm saying? It's about continuing to climb. And there's something that fills your soul and your spirit when you go on to do big things. Again, you vibrate at a higher frequency. You magnetize and attract people. Why? Because when they're with you, let's be real. They feel like they're going to win. When they're with you, you make them think bigger. When they're with you, they think like a winner. And then when they're with you, you inspire them to do great things. I don't know about you, but don't you want to be around those kind of people? I do. And I'm at a place in my life right now where I'm going to choose where I'm going to put my capital, i.e. my capital is my time. And that capital better give me a phenomenal F in return on my investment, right? So anyhow, I'm sorry, I got squirrel on you. Can you tell I'm passionate? <sighs> so with these short-term rentals or to um, solve the affordable housing, you can see there's options here. So now let's talk about delivery. It's $4 a mile for up to 2,000 miles. There I am in Texas and I went to the furthest I could on the right which is 2,215 miles away. And so times $4, that's $8,000. And then anything after um, the 2,000 is $2 a mile. So there you have it for all the way across, give me 8,430. I will tell you, if you get take a 40 footer, that's one 40 footer. If you decide that you wanna take two 20 footers, we can fit them on one trailer. You see what I'm saying? Cool. And then of course, if y'all are just like, hey, it's not for me, but you know other people that might be interested in it, we're giving $1,000 for every referral that we close. And if you don't want your $1,000 referral, if you don't know already, I'm a huge, as Lupe said, I'm big on philanthropy and philanthropic causes, get my goat. As a matter of fact, um, it was a philanthropy event charity um, at a multifamily event where I met my partners and we all came together from um, this opportunity to give back to those in need. So I'm a huge proponent of being with the right people. Okay. So we've already talked about, we learned the sizes, the features, the detail. We've talked about preparation, location, and occupancy. We talked about purchase, the prices, standard versus deluxe. We talked about um, the profit, whether it's a short-term or long-term, right? And next steps are when you're ready to, uh, if you want to talk containers and you want to make it a reality, then you get to um, grab a spot on my calendar and we can talk shop um, and answer any questions that you might have. And that is really what I've got for you guys. And now I was thinking we can open it up to Q&A because I'm sure you guys have them. How does that sound, Lupe? Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Okay. Ass away. All right. I'm going to turn this off so I can see all of your beautiful faces. Oh, hi, so Aaron. This is, this is Mike. Um, Mike, how's it going? It's, it's really right, good to have good. you on here, but it's sad not to see your face, brother. But go ahead. Oh. I'll forgive you. <laughs> Although you muted yourself. Were you trying to find your camera? 
I'm sorry. Yep. There it is. Okay. So I was oh, ask some, there he is. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was picking up the dog um, and driving at the time. But um, financing, how does financing work on um, these particular units? I know this is pretty not, probably not the, the traditional route. So just wondering how yeah. to finance. So right now we are working with a potential that is looking to finance for our buyers. As I've sold these along the way, we've never allowed financing, but it is something that we're working on right now for sure. So you can stay tuned to that. By the way, um, www.stancontained.com is where you can see a little bit more about, and I'll put it in the chat, um, see a little bit more. That's our sales side and www.thecontainer.com retreat.com is where you will see our come stay at our shipping container tiny homes so you can see both sides right and it's nice to be able to um see someone that's actually not just selling them but actually has put it to work that's actually gotten financing that's actually making moves in the space right and so yes i'm big with quattro capital and that is my main thing but I have got like um, five different other streams of income. How many of you guys have read the book, Who Not How by Dan Sullivan? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, if you have not, it's probably the number one book. If you're entrepreneurial, I don't know. Do you want another income stream? Maybe um, I would write it down. And the reason why is the premise of the book. Do you mind if I share, Tiff, since a lot of people have not read it? Absolutely, it's a great book, share. Yeah. And so the biggest thing is this, imagine if you had a goal in mind that you wanted to achieve, but you were so focused on how am I going to do it? Who do I need to get? How am I going to do it? Oh, but it's going to take this and it's going to take that. It's about finding the right who's putting him in the place that know how to help you to get your end goal and you not worry about all those things along the way. That is how I have mightily lived my life, especially in the last four years. And doing that has allowed me to have five different income streams um, for example, Quattro Capital is one of them. That's my baby. That's my, I'm the face of the company and the whole investor in equity relations and raised tens of millions of dollars. Um, that's my number one. So how in the world, if I'm over here, am I able to do all of these other things? Meaning I have an, an insurance brokerage. We do whole life insurance. Our investors come in and they invest in their whole life and they circulate through the whole life. And then they invest into apartment buildings with us or with other people's investments. It's a game changer. Everyone should have a whole life policy. It creates an additional income stream. Well, guess what? I don't run that whole entire company. My mom is older. I'd like to bless the socks off of her life. So years ago, I told her I got licensed in 2008. I told her, go get your license. I don't, I'm not about freebies. So she went and got her license and she, I am the face. I do the illustrations. I talk through logistics. And she runs everything for the back office and deals with all the underwriting and all the things, okay? That's number two. Number three is I have Stay Uncontained. Well, guess who one of my partners is for Stay Uncontained? Actually, I have two. One of the partners is my 19-year-old son. Brilliant individual. He's already got his own little shipping container. Do you see what I'm saying? You get the shipping container. It's the door that opens you to go on and do greater things. And now my child is running a company. Well, guess who his other partner is or our other partner it's the builder. You can have someone building for you and just paying them an hourly wage, but how much commitment are you going to get out of them? Give them a piece of the pie. You don't have to have the whole enchilada. Are you catching what I'm throwing down? This is applicable to anything in life, any company you have. You take care of your people the right way and you'll have lifers. And especially if you do it without manipulation and you do it with true love, 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 magical things happen. Okay. Can I give you another example? Well, I'll give you one more. So I'm also a lender to other people. So I lend money to other people. Well, guess what? Other people lend money to me. Um, and then the other thing is, is this. I want you to think about this, those shipping containers. The shipping container retreats. I think I'm almost done. Um, thank you. The shipping container retreats. Check this out. I'm busy with Quattro. I do not have time to go do a development. But what I will tell you I love people. I love to see people win. I showed you what I did in Kerrville with the two shipping containers with my child, my child, my children. That was merely a proof of concept. When it took off like wildfire, guess what I said? I can't stop here. I got to go bless the socks off somebody. And so all that kept going through my head was this. Pardon me, I just have to have a drink. 
all that kept going through my head is what guys we got to go bigger we got to go bigger i want you to start thinking bigger because here's the truth of the matter we all play way too small way too small and you will only get as big as your biggest thought hear me what i just said you will only get as big as your biggest thought. Yeah, thank you, Lupe. Like, take that. Um, so what did I do? Guys, we've got to get strategic. You've got to put on the right game hat to go play big and win big. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting squirreled. So check this. On the development in the land, I was what? I was the visionary. I was the one that casted massive vision. I put this business plan together and I said, I want to build... 15 shipping containers here as the first phase. And I want to end up doing 65 of these suckers. And I want to have them as Airbnbs. And here's where I want to buy the land. And here's how I'm going to do it. And here's the, here's the, here's the, okay? Well, guess what? Who did I go to to cast vision to? I want you to hear this. This is so applicable to any area of your life. In my community where I live, in my little pod here, I have investors that have taken a chance on me. And they've come and invested with Quattro. And when I work with them, what do I ask them? Most people say, oh, check out my deal. It's so great. Come get in it. For that. You have got to be a differentiator. And when I say that, you need to find out what makes other people tick. What is it that they're looking for? How can you, how can you help fill and meet their goals, their needs, their desires? Are you truly listening? Because if you are the differentiator... You can find out by asking the right questions. Are you looking to be active? Are you looking to be passive? Like, would you like to come and work alongside of me if I could find a way to make that happen in the future? And I listen and I take notes. And two particular people that live not even a half mile from me in my community that have already invested with me, that know that I am a class act, top notch. I do what I say I'm going to do. And they've had a great experience with working with our firm. Guess what happened? I went and took my vision to them. And I said, listen, in Kerrville, you know Kerrville, 40 minutes away, here's what happened. And I share the results. These are our shipping containers. Look, they blew up. Do you guys want to join forces with me? I'm handpicking your ass. Okay, sorry, I didn't say that, but I'm handpicking your butt. Do you want to come and build this in high by the wineries? And guess what? They were so honored that I would even consider them because in their head, they were just peons but I did not see them as peons. I saw them as my community members. I saw them for their strength. What is your, asking a question. What is your greatest strength? If you had an opportunity to get in the game and for us to work together, what do you think that you'd be really good at? And what do you think you'd be really good at? So guess what? One of them works at CarMax and runs a whole entire operation of 80 people. Another one is full-blown in construction. So do you understand how I put the right who is in their place that know how so that we can execute together? They were thrilled. So guess then what happened? I was the vision caster. I was the strategic person that put all the teams together that brought the six people together for the first deal and had everybody bring their own capital. We didn't syndicate this. I wanted everyone to have skin in the game, right? And so that's what we did for our first one. And then all of a sudden, what happened with the second one? I casted enough vision that the first team, I said, listen, y'all are taking a chance on me. We're going to walk out something big together, but I'm not going to be transactional with you. I want you to win and let's go duplicate this thing. So we're over here. And when we duplicate it, I'm going to count you in. So what happened 30 days later, guys? Remember, I bought the million dollar piece of property, the land. So what did I do? I am always going to do the right thing. So I went back to them. I said, I got good news for you. Y'all took a chance on me and it's only been 30 days and I'm going to bring you in as silent partners, as founding members for this next property. Imagine how that made them feel. I did not ask them to come and execute and help over there on that property and do all the grunt work that I'm having them do over on this property. I put a new team in place. Why? I didn't want them to get bogged down with this over here and not be able to execute over here. So I hired, I got two different sets of teams. I just made them the founding partners. Y'all check in what I'm throwing down. So when you bless the socks off of other people and you are not transactional, you can't help but to have success. Are we really not recording this call? 
we're recording. Oh, okay. I'm not seeing the recording button on my, on my thingy here, but, um, thank you for confirming that Tiffany. I'm kind of getting a little hyped over here. Um, does this make sense guys? Like, give me a thumbs up if you're liking what you're hearing, because it's really applicable to anything in life. Right. Thanks, Mikhail. Thanks, Michael. Um, so I'm going to pause. This was supposed to be Q and a, and I just talked way too long. Fire away someone. So one question I have about the units is, uh, how do you connect them to like water and drains and internet and electricity and all that? Good question. Thank you for asking. Um, and I, I crossed over that. I apologize. Yes, you can hook up to city utilities, but as I said, it's better to go outside city limits on unrestricted land and you can tie right into a well that's okay. Well, let me use my property. Remember the two kid ones that had there, we tied right into the well that was already on the property. There was also septic already there, but we had to increase the size of the septic, okay? And we brought in our own roads for us to go down into the wilderness and kind of hide with our shipping containers down there. So I I put in the base and built up a, a whatchamacallit to put them on, okay? So you could tie into, into um, city utilities, absolutely. But remember, you may, depending on where you live, your city may or may not be for a shipping container being there. Next question, great question though. Ash, appreciate you. Thank you. And internet? How do you get internet over there? What's that? Internet. Oh, is it breaking up? No, no. How do you get the internet oh. availability? <laughs> yeah. For the units. Yeah, we have internet. So we actually drill a hole in the container and we bring the wires in through and then you can hook your TV right up. And truthfully, you're just going to use the fire stick or whatever else that Roku or I don't watch TV, so I don't, I don't know what it's all called, but Netflix, all of that, you just get on your TV. So you don't even have to have that. And then internet's already there. I will tell you this, this is a great one that people ask all the time. This is the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest to run. What do I mean by that? Well, we're off of septic and we're off of well, so there's not a cost for that for us. The internet is $40 per unit, okay? And then you have your trash, whatever trash is. So the utilities, I'm sorry, the electricity, I take that back. Our electricity bill for each one is $30 a month. Where else can you get utilities? Under 60, 70 bucks. Pretty sweet. Okay, I got two more minutes and I'm jumping. Any other questions? Oh. Are all of your containers, um, do you run them all as uh, Airbnbs? Yes, but we're moving from the model only because my heart's desire right now is to solve the affordable housing issue. So we are looking for land in great places of possible partnerships, but I'm very, very picky of who I partner with because I like to work with really, really good people. I'm going to do a background check on the people. I will tell you, check this out. Um, we just were working, looking to link arms with a gentleman out of Houston, was highly referred from a very good friend. And um, he had his hands on a hundred acres in Houston, already owned and seemed like an amazing, amazing creature. He was like 61 years old. We got the background check that we paid $250 for and multiple DUIs had a tax lien from last year, $400,000. Those are not the kind of partners I'm looking for. I like really good class act, top notch. If you've had an issue, tell me about your issue. Don't let me find out type of thing afterwards. So I don't move forward with that background checks period, nor should you. So if anyone has land or anything incredible that you'd like to talk shop on, um, and has the boots on the ground, is the boots on the ground or has the boots on the ground because it definitely needs an ownership's oversight. It's not something that can be set it and forget it unless you're going for affordable housing. That's something that can be talked about. Does do uh, the numbers still work if you do long-term? Yeah, we went through that. Yeah, for the 20-foot shipping container, if it rented for eight nights a, a month at $100 a night, mm -hmm. that was showing a 15% return but it also factored $300 in expenses out of that 800. So you were really only netting 500 bucks a month. Well, you you can... I know confidently you can rent a 20 foot shipping container for $600 confidently. That's going to make you far more money than the Airbnb if it only rented for eight nights. 
That's why location, location, location is the most important because if you're in a desirable location for Airbnb, then fantastic. You're probably going to get far more than eight nights, which is only going to make it more favorable. But if you think your location is not that great and it would be good for affordable housing, even at $600 a month collection for the price you would pay for a shipping container makes it an absolute no-brainer. Okay. All right. Tiffany, any last minute questions before I head? That's what I was just checking to see if anyone had any last minute questions. I don't have anything. This was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I share your same passion. So I get like you when I start speaking too. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Anyone, anyone want to share their favorite part that they heard or learned? I'd love to hear. Well, I'll share. I like the part of getting your kids involved. Um, I try to get my son involved and in understanding the numbers, the returns, the investment piece on really understanding how to make his money work for him, um, as well as the impact that he can make to people's lives. So that's the part that really um, stuck out. And I appreciate you, Sharon. Oh, you're welcome. All right, y'all. Anyone else before we jump? All right. Take care. Have a wonderful night. Bye, guys. Thank you Bye. so much, Sharon. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.